Uh, hello and welcome once again to another class. So today you are looking at the constituents of matter and uh, uh, we'll be looking at uh, elements, uh, atoms, molecules, compounds and mixtures. So we'll be giving definitions of each. We'll begin the definition of each. So in the preceding discussions, uh, matter has been classified as solid, liquid or gas. Uh, we have been looking at matter and we said that matter is classified into three states. Uh, we have uh, solid, liquid and gas. So, pure substances can also be classified as elements or compounds. So, pure substances can, can also be classified as elements or compounds. So, let's begin by looking at the elements. So, there are other substances that cannot be split or broken down into simpler substances by chemical means cannot be split or broken down into simpler substances by any chemical means for example we have iron we have sulfur which when reacted uh, or which 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 react and form sulfur iron 2 sulfide uh, iron and sulfur react to form iron 2 sulfide they react to form iron 2 sulfide so the two substances uh, the two substances are called elements so an element can therefore be defined as a pure substance which cannot be split into any simpler substance by any chemical process so uh, it's a it's a pure an element it's a pure substance that cannot be split into any simpler substance by any chemical process by any chemical process there are about 118 known elements where about a hundred of the uh, uh, 90 of them occur naturally on the earth and its atmosphere while the rest have been made in the laboratories so we are saying that we have 118 uh, known elements and about 90 of these known elements are, are natu they occur naturally and uh, the remaining 28 they have been made in the laboratory so most of the elements can be classified as metals or non-metals so we are saying that metals can be classified as metal uh, uh, the elements can be classified as metals or non-metals and all metals except mercury are solids at room temperature so ele uh, metal uh, elements is classified further uh, into metals and non-metals and we are saying that metals are all solids except mercury at room temperature so uh all uh, all element all, all metals are uh, good to conductor of electricity except graphite that's an metal but a good conductor of electricity so let's look at example of some of the elements that we have uh, uh now we are grouping them as metals or, or non-metals so on the for the side of metal you have sodium we have magnesium we have calcium we have zinc, we have iron, we have lead, we have copper, we have silver, we have gold, we have platinum, we have tin, we have barium, we have beryllium, we have mercury, we have uranium, we have cobalt, we have chromium, manganese, and then finally we have aluminium. Those are some of the examples of metals. Then on the elements that are now in metals, we have carbon, we have nitrogen we have silicon we have oxygen we have sulfur we have chlorine bromine iodine fluorine hydrogen neon argon boron we have phosphorus and then helium so that's are some of the examples of non-metal so have looked at uh, we say that you have elements and then elements are further classified into two metals and non-metals so you have seen them so we move further and discuss about atoms so you have seen that matter is made up tiny particles you have seen that matter is made up up of tiny particles so this particle can be divided further by chemical means so the particles of matter particles of matter can be divided further by chemicals by chemical means so when they cannot be divided any further any further without changing the properties of the element so we are saying that when they cannot be divided any further without changing the properties of the element the particle at this stage are called atoms remember now atoms cannot uh, 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 further be split so 
an atom can be defined uh, can be defined as smallest particle into which an element can be divided without losing the properties of the element uh, so uh, it's the smallest particle into which an element can be divided without losing the properties of the element we can also define an uh, an atom as smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction smallest part of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction so single atoms are far too small to be even seen by uh, to be seen even by the most powerful microscope for example about 4 billion 4 billion ion atoms will fit side by side on the full stop on the full stop at the end of this sentence of our uh, on the full stop at the end of this sentence so an atom of one element is different from atom of another element so atoms are unique atoms are unique so uh, this makes them this makes each and every element to have atoms of their own kind so that means that an iron atom is different from a copper atom so as a, 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 a and also a copper atom is different from a zinc atom and so forth so as many as we have the elements so as we have uh, 118 elements we also have uh, 118 atoms so we can therefore conclude that there are some there are, are as many atoms as there are elements there are about 118 different types of elements and therefore there are also 118 different types of atoms different types of atoms so atoms do not exist on their own they usually take part in a chemical reaction that's why i have said that it's the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction so they do not uh, exist on their own they usually take part in a chemical reaction now let's go ahead and look at compounds so we have already seen that when substances like iron and sulfur are heated they combine chemically to form a new substance called iron 2 sulfide so when you heat iron and sulfur they'll form a new substance that now we are calling iron 2 sulfide so a substance formed by chemically combining two or more elements a substance formed by chemically combining two or more elements together is called a compound so a compound can be simply defined as a substance formed by chemically combining two or more elements a substance formed by chemically combining two or more elements so that's what we are calling a compound therefore we can define uh, we can go ahead and define a compound a substance made up of two or more elements combined together by chemical means so remember now you are saying that uh, uh, it, they are as, it's a substance made up of two or more elements remember now the elements are reacting now to come up with a, a compound and they are they are reacting chemically so a substance made up of two or more elements combined together by chemical means for instance when magnesium that is one element is burnt in air it combines with oxygen which is another element to form magnesium oxide now magnesium oxide therefore is a compound of magnesium and oxygen elements so we are now burning magnesium in air and we come up with magnesium oxide which is now our compound which has been now made been made from magnesium and oxygen elements so other examples of compounds are water a uh, compound of hydrogen and oxygen we have common salt a compound of sodium and chlorine we have copper carbonate a compound of copper and uh, compound of copper carbon and oxygen then we have a uh, uh, that's a compound a uh, copper carbonate that's a compound of copper carbon and oxygen remember when you have a, any compound that now is ending in ate any any compound that now ends in ate it means that 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 compound is made up of three it's made up of three elements and the third element will be that will be oxygen and the third element will be oxygen so a compound has different chemical and physical properties from those 
of the elements of which it is composed. So we are saying that a compound has different chemical and physical properties from those of the elements of which it is composed of. So when you look at copper carbonate, it's made from uh, copper, carbon and oxygen. Uh, you realize that the physical properties of the copper carbonate are different from that of carbon, are different from that of copper, and also different from that of oxygen. So that's what we are saying that uh, a compound has different chemical and physical properties from those of the elements of which it is composed of. So I have here a table that shows some of the compounds and their constituent elements. Uh, we will only be looking at their physical uh, physical uh, characteristic uh, like a color of either the co of the compound and that of the of the elements that make up that compound. So we have magnesium oxide, which is a white ash, uh, which is made from magnesium that is gray in, that is a gray metal, and uh, oxygen that is a colorless gas, and oxygen that is a colorless gas. So we can see that uh, another compound which is water that uh, that is liquid at room temperature, made from hydrogen which is a colorless gas, and uh, oxygen which is also a colorless gas. We have copper carbonate, which is a green powder, made from copper, which is a red brown metal. Made, uh, and uh, we also have carbon, which is black solid. We have oxygen, uh, which is a colorless gas. We also have carbon two oxide, which is a colorless gas that is made from carbon, a black solid, oxygen, colorless gas. We have copper two oxide have copper two oxide uh, copper two oxide is a black uh, powder made from copper which is a red brown metal and oxygen a colorless gas uh, further we have copper two nitrate which is a green solid nitrate which is a green solid uh, that is made from copper which is red brown metal nitrogen a colorless gas and then oxygen also a colorless gas so those, the, the, that's uh, how we, uh, we are saying that uh, uh, compounds um, are, are made from the elements and these compounds, they have different physical and uh, chemical properties different from the elements that they are made of, different from those of the elements. So let's go ahead and look at the molecules. So all compounds consist of two or more elements chemically combined together and exist as a single particle. So you're saying that a comp all compounds consist of two or more elements chemi chemically combined together and exist as single particles. So the smallest particle of an element or a compound which can normally exist in a free or a separate state is what we are calling a molecule is what we are calling a molecule smallest particle of an element the aura or compound which can uh, exist in a free and separate state uh, is what we are calling a molecule so this means that there are some elements whose molecule consists of one atom there are some uh, element whose molecule consists of one atom while others have two or more so you'll find that we have some uh, elements that their molecule consists one atom uh, uh, those we, we call the monoatomic and we'll find that those we have molecules of the elements that uh, that are uh, that contain two uh, atoms we call them diatomic and we have uh, some that have three atoms we call them triatomic so molecules of compound have two or more different atoms have two or more different atoms so uh, we note that molecule composed of one atom like argon and other noble gases we call them monoatomic then uh, the molecules composed of two atoms like oxygen we have hydrogen have nitrogen and others are known as diatomic and and three atoms like those of ozone are known as triatomic so we are saying that 
you will find that some elements have molecules that are composed of one atom. We are calling them monoatomic. Then you'll find some uh, elements uh, having molecules are uh, composed of two uh, composed of two atoms. We call them diatomic. And then we have some uh, elements have molecules that consist of three atoms. We are calling them triatomic. We are calling them triatomic. So we can see here the difference between molecules and a compound. We can have the difference between molecules and compounds. So uh, the, uh, we have uh, the, uh, from definition, a molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. A molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. Then a compound is a substance which is made, uh, which is formed by two or more different types of elements which are united chemically in a fixed proportion. Remember now a compound is made up of elements. A compound is made up of elements. While a molecule is made up of atoms. A molecule is made up of atoms. So uh, 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 that is uh, uh, on, on definition. So and how, how, on, then let's look on how they relate. The relatedness. All molecules are not compounds. All molecules are not compounds. Uh, because, uh, uh, but uh, for compounds, all compounds are molecules. All compounds are molecules. So, uh, when we look at an example, we have an example of a molecule is ozone. And an example of a compound is, a, is the table salt, which is sodium chloride. Uh, looking at the difference in structure, molecules are simply a group of atoms which are bonded by a strong force. While uh, com all compounds are actually matter in their complete shape. All compounds are actually matter in their complete shape. Uh, looking at the uh, now visibility, a molecule cannot be seen with the naked eye as they are as they are at the atomic level. So a molecule cannot be seen with the naked eye, but a compound can be easily seen with the naked eye. A compound can be easily seen with the naked eye. We go further and look at mixtures. Uh, so we have learned about different methods of separating separating mixtures. So a mixture is formed as a result of bringing particles of different substances into close contact with each other. So without chemically combining them. So we are saying that a mixture is formed as a result of bringing particles of different substances into close contact with each other without chemically combining them. So, a mixture, uh, we can have, uh, we can say that uh, maize and beans is a mixture. Maize and beans is a mixture because they are not chemically combined. So, usually, the, sub the substances that make up a mixture can be mixed in any proportion and each component retains its original physical and chemical properties. So, in mixtures, uh, the substances will uh, retain their original physical and chemical properties they retain their original physical and chemical properties that which is uh, uh, opposed uh, uh, when we look at compounds so a mixture therefore shows the properties of its components for instance a mixture of sand and salt has the properties of both sand and salt so we are saying that a mixture uh, shows the properties of its components uh, for instance a mixture of sand and salt has the properties of both salt and sand. Similarly, when looking at the sugar solution, uh, uh, which is uh, made up of sugar and water, uh, has the properties of both sugar and water. So a mixture may contain elements or compounds. A mixture may contain elements or compounds. So air is an example of a mixture. Air consists of a mixture of elements. We have nitrogen, you have oxygen, and then you have noble gases. And the compounds, uh, we have water, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, water vapor, we have carbon-4 oxide. So we have already seen that mixtures can be separated by si simple means. 
such as filtration, you have chromatography, you have crystallization, you have distillation, uh, uh, where in distillation you have simple distillation and fractional distillation. We also have sublimation. So we saw earlier in this unit that a compound also consists of more than one type of substance. A compound is composed of more than one substance. So, however, compounds are different from mixtures. Compounds are different from mixtures. So we learned that ion filings and sulfur can be separated by physical means using a magnet. They can be separated uh, using a magnet that's a physical means. Uh, this is possible because the two elements were not chemically combined. They were not chemically combined, but only mixed. So you can conclude from uh, this observation that different kinds of matter can be made to combine together in two ways to form complex substances. They can merely be brought together in any proportion to form a mixture or they can be heated or allowed to react chemically to form a compound. So we are saying that different substances can be brought together to form a mixture or, or can be heated to form a compound or left to react to form a compound. They can be left to form a compound. So let's look at the difference between mixtures and compound. Difference between mixture and compound. So the substance in a uh, the substances in a mixture can be separated by physical means or by physical methods. Uh, while in compound, the substances in a compound cannot be separated by physical methods. Then uh, the properties of a mixture are average of the properties of the substances in it. While the properties uh, in a compound are different from the properties of the substances which made it. Are different from the substances which made it. Uh, looking at the mixture, the substance which make up the mixture need need not to be in fixed proportion. They can be mixed in any in any proportion. But for the compound, the substance is a the substances in a compound are in fixed proportion. Substances in a compound are in fixed proportion. So mixtures are formed by physical me methods and no new substance is formed. Mixtures are formed by physical methods and no new substance is formed. While uh, in compound, a compound is formed by a chemical method or chemical means and a new substance is formed. And a new substance is formed. So when we look in, uh, at mixture, uh, no energy, heat or light is liberated out is liberated out or absorbed during the formation of the mixture uh, while in the in compounds energy that is uh, either of heat or light is liberated or absorbed during the formation of the compound during the formation of the compound so while forming a compound we'll have energy that is either given out or absorbed Let's go ahead and, and uh, discuss about chemical symbols. So in chemistry, names of elements are written in shorthand form known as chemical symbol. So uh, the shorthand uh, uh, method that now we are using to write the names of elements, we are calling them, them chemical symbol. So this system of writing symbols uses letters taken from the name of the element and this could be the English or Latin name of the element. So the symbol of an element consists of one or two letters. They consist of either one or two letters. For example, uh, uh, in the case of uh, potassium, we have the chemical symbol as K. Uh, uh, K, uh, which is derived from now the Latin name Calium. And for the case uh, of... Uh, magnesium we have the symbol as mg we are having m as the capital letter and g small letter and uh, these are english 
name. So we say that they are either derived from English or Latin names. So the first letter of a chemical symbol must always be a capital letter. Must be always a capital letter. The letters should not be joined in handwriting. The letters should not be joined in handwriting. So these symbols are an international code. So this means that all over the world, symbols are written in the same way, no matter how people spell the name of the element in their national or local language. For instance, we were to refer the, 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 the element ion in our national or local language, the name would be different from English, uh, French, or Latin. But in chemistry, the symbol is the same. Uh, for example, now, when we have iron, in Kiswahili, we will call it, uh, uh, in Kiswahili, we will call it Chuma. In English, we will call it iron. In Latin, we will call it Ferrum. But now, the chemical symbol remains the same. The chemical symbol remains the same. No matter the name, uh, we are calling it in the given language. No matter the name, we are calling it in any given language. So, we are saying that uh, uh, we have iron, uh, that's the English name, but now, looking at now the chemical symbol is Fe, which is derived from the Latin name Ferrum. So, no matter the language, uh, the symbol remains the same. The symbol, the chemical symbol remains the same. So, the names of several elements begin with the same letter. The names of several elements begin with the uh, same letter. In such cases, the second or third letter of the English name is included. This is always a small letter. So we are saying that there is uh, either the second or the third letter of that uh, English name is uh, used. And now the, uh, that letter that is used, it has to be a small letter. So you have a table. Uh, that uh, I have a table below that shows some elements whose chemical symbol take up the first letter of the English name. Whose chemical symbol take up the first name of their English. So, we have carbon, that now the chemical symbol is C. We have hydrogen, the chemical symbol is H. We have nitrogen, the chemical symbol is N. We have oxygen. The chemical symbol is O. We have phosphorus. The chemical symbol is P. We have sulfur. The chemical symbol is S. So, no matter the language, the, the chemical symbol will remain the same. No matter the language, the chemical symbol will remain the same. So, we also have a, a table that shows element whose chemical uh, symbol used two letters from the, from the English name of the element. Now, uh, 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 before you have been, we have seen that uh, we have elements which only use the first letter of the English name. Now, we are, we are going further to look at the, uh, uh, the chemical symbol that use the two letters from the English name. The two letters from the English name. So, we can see here, we say that uh, when, when the two letters are used, it is a, the, the second letter is either the second or the third letter of the English name. The second or the third letter of the English name. So, for example, we have calcium, which is now CF, and we said that uh, the second letter is always small. So, the second letter here is A. The second letter is A. We have cobalt. Uh, cobalt now we are using CO, where O is the smallest letter. We have chlorine. Where now we are using the third letter to be the second symbol, the, chem the second chemical symbol. We have magnesium. We are now using G, which is the third English letter, to make it to have Mg as the chemical symbol. We have also manganese that now uses N as the third uh, English uh, letter. So we we can see that now. Uh, we have uh, 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 chemical symbols that uh, bear the English uh, two letters. 
that is either the, the second or the third. And we also have the table that shows element whose chemical symbol used one or two letters from the Latin name of the element. So uh, before we, we saw that uh, uh, the elements that use the first letter of the English name. And then we have seen those that use two letters of the English name. And we said now the second letter is always small. And it is either the second of the English name or the third. So let's look at the now Latin name that uh, Latin, Latin elements whose chemical symbol use one or two elements from the Latin name of the element. So we have potassium that we said uh, Latin name is Calium. Now the chemical symbol is K. We have sodium that the Latin name is Natrium. And now the chemical symbol is Na. We have iron which is ferrum in Latin. And now the symbol is Fe. The symbol is Fe. We have lead. Latin name is Plumbum. Uh, now, where the chemical symbol is Pb, we have silver, which is Agentum in Latin. And uh, the symbol is Ag. We have copper, which is Cupram. Uh, the symbol is Ku. We have mercury, which is hydrogram. Uh, the symbol is Hg. We have gold, which is Oram. Uh, the symbol is Au. So we can see that. So we can see that uh, the symbols are either English names or uh, Latin names. The symbols are either from English or Latin. And uh, 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 they, uh, they, are either, they are either the first letter or the, uh, the, the, the first letter and the second or the third letter. Or the third letter. So... And the, and the first letter is always a capital. So we do not expect I uh, uh, want to learn the Latin names, but uh, uh, we, sh we should learn the symbol. So we are, we are not uh, we, we do not expect a student to learn the Latin name, but now to learn the, the symbol. And now when we see the symbol, we have to uh, to name to name the 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 element. Uh, we name the element using the English name. We name the element using the English name. For example, when you, you see a CU, uh, we read it as copper. We read it as copper. So, uh, we note that the symbol of each element represents one atom of that element. Represents one atom of that element. So, when you have, uh, when you see O, that represents now oxygen, it represents one atom of oxygen it represents one atom of oxygen for instance mg that represents uh, one atom of magnesium uh, but when it is 2 mg represents the two atoms of magnesium represents two atom of magnesium it represents two atoms of magnesium uh, so let's look at now writing the simple word equation. Simple word equation. When a chemical reaction takes place, when a chemical reaction takes place, we can represent it in form of a word equation. We can represent it in a form of a word equation. So when a chemical reaction takes place, we can represent it in a form of a word equation. For example, Remember we said that, that now when we mix uh, iron and sulfur, uh, when the mixture of iron and sulfur is heated, the two elements combine to form a compound called iron 2 sulfide. The two compounds combine to form a compound called iron 2 sulfide. So we can summarize this in form of a word equation as follows. So iron, so now, we are using plus to mean that it reacts with iron reacting with sulfur. We use an arrow now to show now the product that is formed. Iron reacting with sulfur to form iron 2 sulfide. 
So we are saying that the plus sign or the positive sign in chemistry uh, when used in an equation means react with when on the left. So we are saying uh, when the addition sign or the negative or the positive sign, the addition sign or the positive sign when it appears on the left side uh, shows that uh, uh, an element is reacting with another element so the arrow sign means to form the product shown means to form the product shown and now the the two in ion 2 sulfide means the combining power of ion is 2 meaning the combining power of ion is 2 so in this case the combining power of ion is 2 that's why you you will see roman 2 uh, where we have ion 2 sulfide therefore we can interpret the above word equation as ion react with sulfur to form ion 2 sulfide we can uh, interpret this equation as ion reacts with sulfur to form ion 2 sulfide so other examples are as follows we have uh, examples here we have hydrogen reacting with oxygen we say that the positive sign or the plus sign shows uh, that, that that the, the elements are reacting shows that the, the elements react with another element now the arrow sign shows the product that are being formed so hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water this means hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water then you have uh, copper, two, ca copper two carbonate copper two carbonate that now is heated that now is heated to form copper two oxide and carbon four oxide copper two oxide and carbon four oxide there is only one substance on the left of the arrow this equation therefore means that copper 2 carbonate when heated decomposes the copper decomposes to form or a, a decomposer breaks up to form copper 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide copper 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide so now we are heating the copper carbonate to form now copper 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide so when now we have only one compound on the left of the arrow when there is only one substance on the left of the arrow this equation means that uh, the now the substance on the left is being subjected to heat is being subjected to heat and that is being subjected to heat it decomposes or breaks up to form other substances so in this case now copper has decomposed to form now copper carbonate has decomposed to form copper 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide and carbon 4 oxide so we can uh, write it uh, uh, we can now uh, have we can also have another uh equation we have hydrated copper 2 sulfate hydrated copper 2 sulfate uh, uh forming anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and water forming anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and water so in this case uh we have uh double arrows and they are facing opposite direction so this sign in chemistry means a reversible reaction so this means that this reaction is reversible it means that this uh, uh, this it means that this uh, reaction is reversible so uh, the reaction between so remember hydrated copper 2 sulfate is now being subjected to heat to form anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and water and when we react water with anhydrous copper 2 sulfate will again form 
hydrated copper to sulfate. So this reaction is a reversible reaction. When you have two arrows that face opposite direction, it shows that the reaction is reversible. So the reacting substances called are called reactants. Now, what are on the left? They are called reactants. On the left, you have reactants. Uh, the, uh, are, are, are on the left. Reactants are on the left of the arrow. And products of the reaction on the right. Then the products of the reaction are on the right of the arrow. So we have reactants. Then we have an arrow, then product. So on the left, we have the reactants. And on the right, we have products. And on the right, we have product. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment.